hey guys welcome back to today's video today is monday october 24th 2022 and today we just got a bunch of new polls for michigan wisconsin and pennsylvania from cnn ssrs this is a major pollster cnn has released a number of new swing state polling numbers that are going to be very helpful as we continue looking at the status of senate and governor races across the rust belt region wisconsin michigan and pennsylvania these are the three states that president trump flipped that were a part of what we called the blue wall states that voted for the democratic party for 24 consecutive years starting in the year 1992 you can take a look here the blue wall take a look at these three states in particular wisconsin michigan pennsylvania the last time it was cracked was in 1988 but even then one of the states wisconsin went blue in 1984 was the the last time until Trump that Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania went to the GOP together. So you can see where this idea of a blue wall was built into uh, American understanding about politics. Michigan went to Obama by 17 points in 2008, Wisconsin by 14, Pennsylvania by 10, and then you fast forward to 2016 and Donald Trump flips them. And now they're coming to us with an extremely competitive Senate race in Pennsylvania, a somewhat competitive Senate race in Wisconsin, and an extremely competitive governor's race in Wisconsin as well, and a not so competitive governor's race in Michigan and Pennsylvania. Regardless, though, these are states that are important because they also went back to President Biden in the 2020 election. The blue wall returned, but not nearly to this extent or to the strength level that we had seen under Obama or, quite frankly, John Kerry or Al Gore. The results in 2020 were indicators to the GOP that the impact of President Trump was quite lasting. That was something that people saw as uh, an indicator that the Democratic Party was doing at least somewhat better, but in no way was locking it down like they once were, which meant that in future elections, these states would absolutely be up for grabs for the Republican Party. And that's exactly what's happening this election cycle. To give additional context as to where we are in the Senate and governor's races, right now in my most recent projection, Pennsylvania is tilt blue, Wisconsin is lean red, and my governor projection, Pennsylvania, Michigan are likely blue states, Wisconsin on the other hand is tilt red. So what you find from this and what you can take away from this is that there are two states on the governor level that are pretty solid for Democrats, Michigan and Pennsylvania. Wisconsin is really the one that we're going to be talking about the most. On the Senate level, Pennsylvania and Wisconsin are competitive, but Pennsylvania significantly more than Wisconsin, at least at this point in time. And as for a polling background, in addition to, you know, what we understand about the race right now, John Fetterman currently leads. He's the Democrat in Pennsylvania by three points in this Senate race. In Wisconsin, on the other hand, Ron Johnson, the incumbent Republican governor, senator, might I say, is winning by 2.6% across the state. So 2.6 for the Democrats in Pennsylvania, 2.6 for the Republicans in Wisconsin, even though Wisconsin is expected to go more to the GOP than Pennsylvania is. But in the new data from CNN, we are finding, at least on the Senate level, that the Democratic Party isn't doing as poorly as as we initially thought in Pennsylvania or in Wisconsin. The trend over the past couple of weeks has been Pennsylvania narrowing up quite significantly. At different points in time, John Fetterman maintained an 11-point lead over Dr. Oz, his Republican opponent, and that's what we saw on the national level for a significant period of time. John Fetterman had a double-digit lead for months, and then it went down to high single digits, and now it's down to low single digits. Today, we stand at a point where John Fetterman leads by actually 2.2%, not 2.6%, 2.2%, or I guess it is 2.6% now. I don't know what was happening with that graph. I forgot the date for a moment, but at the end of the day, John Fetterman's lead 2.6% today from what was 11 points, 12 points across the state of Pennsylvania. As for Wisconsin, the polling numbers were better for Democrats originally. Mandela Barnes maintained about a four point lead over Ron Johnson, and Democrats were quite happy with that. But then a huge set of ads came into Wisconsin, ushered in a new level of voting and a new uh, dislike for Mandela Barnes across the state to a point where Ron Johnson is now hovering around 50%, and Mandela Barnes is at 47%. But these two states were always going to be somewhat competitive, but Pennsylvania, we have been expecting to see it lead for Dr. Oz for the first time this entire campaign season. And that's what we saw with WIC Institute that released a new poll that showed Dr. Oz leading by five points statewide. You can see in every single poll leading into the election that John Fetterman maintained a lead over Dr. Oz. There really was never a point in time where Dr. Oz was leading John Fetterman across the state. Not even polling institutions such as Trafalgar could show the Republican ahead. So for months on end, John Fetterman was dominating, and for the first time in forever, quite literally forever, Dr. Oz is leading John Fetterman in a recent poll by about five points. But then came in Echelon Insights, which showed John Fetterman leading by three. Insider Advantage showed Fetterman leading by one. And then CNN comes out with a poll showing John Fetterman leading by six. So it looks like that five-point poll in favor of Dr. Oz, at least as of right now, was an outlier. And I think that's fair to say. Calling it an outlier is calling it what it is. 
Yes, it is a change in direction, but it isn't enough to convince me that Dr. Oz is currently ahead in the Pennsylvania Senate race. I could see how it gets there. I would definitely say my tilt blue characterization is what I am most comfortable in right now for the state of Pennsylvania. But this new poll from CNN provided a new insight on the state itself, gave us a five-point lead for John Fetterman, one that we can see to be quite substantial, at least relative to what the numbers were before. In the governor's race, Josh Shapiro wins by 15 points according to these numbers. Now, don't get me wrong. I think that Josh Shapiro wins the governor's race, but I do not think he wins by 15, nor do I think Fetterman wins the Senate race by five points either. I think it's going to be narrower than this, but it is a good indication, at least for the Democrats, that they are, in fact, leading. You see, that poll from WIC that showed Dr. Oz leading by five points also showed the governor's race between about two to three percentage points. That was never really realistic. When you look at the Josh Shapiro, Doug Mastriano numbers, you can see that even more recently, Shapiro has started to, to do better. And today he averages about an 11 point lead over Doug Mastriano in a race that should be, quite frankly, going to the Republican Party. But it's because of the unelectability of Mastriano and the electability of Josh Shapiro that is changing the state of this race, changing it so much that the Democrats are leading by double digits in Pennsylvania. Quite frankly, Josh Shapiro could really be helping John Fetterman when it comes down to this Senate race. But looking at the five point lead again, I don't trust five points, but I do trust a Fetterman lead. I think that is the fairest point in time, a uh, fairest uh, characterization at this point in time for the Pennsylvania Senate race. But this video isn't entirely about Pennsylvania. We talked about it, and now we can move on to the state of Wisconsin. We talked about Mandela Barnes and Ron Johnson, but it looks like in this most recent poll that Ron Johnson is leading by just one percentage point, according to CNN. Now, personally, I don't buy that. I think that what we should expect from Wisconsin is this average to be correct. Ron Johnson wins by three to four points across the state because that makes sense, especially given our national environment. But this one point for lead for John, uh, Ron Johnson it's also similar to what we saw with CBS News and YouGov when they released their own poll. In fact, they are the same exact numbers. The only thing that was really different here was Marquette University that showed Ron Johnson leading by about six points. But the change is quite substantial. You can see here back in old polls, even ones from Marquette that showed Ron Johnson leading by one, now show him leading by six. Or the polling numbers from other, uh, other institutions that have changed quite dramatically. For instance, Trafalgar had Mandela Barnes up by two. Now they have him losing by two. And I'm sure with a last minute poll, before the election, he's going to be losing by even more. You can see here, Fox News, Mandela Barnes was leading by four. The most recent Fox News poll shows Ron Johnson winning by five, right? So when I see these numbers, I see a clear and consistent trend in favor of the Republican Party. And what we find here is that this in favor of the Republican Party means that this one point lead for CNN probably isn't the most accurate, though it does provide additional data for our overall set and average. One point is underselling Ron Johnson's electability and what he will likely win by on November 8th. But I will say that it is something to still take into consideration. For the governor's race, it shows that Tony Evers is outperforming uh, Mandela Barnes, which is something that we actually saw coming. I think Wisconsin's governor race was always going to be more competitive than the Senate race simply because Tony Evers has defeated electoral juggernauts in the past. He defeated Scott Walker back in 2018 by about a point defeated uh, and lost, sorry, not lost. Uh, Scott Walker won in 2014 by 5.7%, won in 2012 as well, won in 2000, uh, not 2010, but won in 2012, won in 2014. So when you think about that, when you think about the, uh, or he did win in 2010, actually, he was going for a third term in 2018. He lost his election to Tony Evers. But Evers, I also say, you know, I think personally is not going to win his election in Wisconsin either. I think the data in itself does show a good result for Tony Evers. It definitely shows that there is a bit of a drop-off between the Senate and governor's race, which is in a sense good news for Evers, but both of them could very much end up losing. I think we see this to be more clear in the CBS News and YouGov poll where it's a tie here, uh, but a Johnson victory of one, or CNN shows Johnson winning by one, but Evers winning by two, or Marquette, which shows Johnson winning by six, but Evers by one. You're talking an average of a three to four point drop-off, which means that the Senate race is kept within three to four points. Good news for the Democrats. They're probably winning the governorship. But as of right now, I don't think that is significant enough, at least, especially with the more recent CNN number, for me to believe that Wisconsin is going blue on the governor's level. I think Tony Evers is going to lose his election at this point in time. And that's what my most recent projection says. It has it as a uh, tilt red state. But honestly, I can imagine it being lean red in the future. In fact, I don't think that there is a, an updated map here on uh, this website, but we will get that in there soon. And the final poll that I want to talk about, the one from the state of Michigan showing quite an interesting result out of the governor's race there, showing Gretchen Whitmer with a six-point lead across the state. 
In fact, it's a six-point lead that seems to be replicated by polling numbers from uh, Signal, which is a Republican firm, but Trafalgar says that it's a tie. Mitchell Research says Whitmer wins by two, Emerson says Whitmer wins by five, and Insider Advantage also calls it a tie as well. It has gotten bad enough for Gretchen Whitmer on the Rooker politics front that they currently expect Michigan to go red, but personally, I wouldn't sweat it if I was a Democrat. The race itself, yes, was never going to be a race that the Democrats were winning by sometimes these large margins of 18 points statewide. That was, quite frankly, never going to happen. But fortunately enough for Gretchen Whitmer, she has been able to maintain her lead throughout this entire election cycle. She started out as the underdog against James Craig based off the data that we had, and that can't be denied. The numbers showed that Whitmer would lose to James Craig, and he was the front runner for the GOP nomination. But even being the front runner and then eventually disqualified, the GOP fell into a state of disarray. Only five candidates remained out of the other five being disqualified, and then we found that Tudor Dixon was a last minute choice by Donald Trump, won the nomination, and is now still on track to lose her election. Gretchen Whitmer is ahead by 3.2% on average, but that's largely because the numbers here seem to be averaging it incorrectly. And I say that in full confidence. Not necessarily that the math is wrong, but more so that they are picking and choosing about what should or should not be averaged. Gretchen Whitmer, again, was never going to win. By some points, these polls said 35 points. Obviously, that was never going to happen. That was not the case of the state of the race, and that's not what we will see on November. But this five-point lead isn't too far-fetched either. I think the state itself has been likely blue, meaning it's been anywhere between 5 and 15%, but that's because Michigan is a state where Gretchen Whitmer does have a pathway to win between 5 to 10%. I never thought it would go above 10% at least in more recent time frames, and even then it was a consideration of an under significant underperformance of Tudor Dixon, because even in 2018, Gretchen Whitmer won by about 8.5%. But you can see in the numbers here that the average was a Whitmer 10-point victory, but she ended up winning by 8.5. You can find that if you swing these numbers off by that, you still find that Gretchen Whitmer wins her race. She defeats Tudor Dixon, and that's the result of the election. Gretchen Whitmer was supposed to be someone who was losing from the beginning, who was doomed to lose this race from the start of the campaign season, and yet that simply did not happen. And these new numbers from CNN seem to indicate that, hey, Gretchen Whitmer is still maintaining a lead. It matches nearly the other average that we see on 538, six points versus five points, not too far of a drop off, but overall good news for Democrats when it comes down to numbers in Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin. Do I think they're overestimating Democrats in Wisconsin? I do. Do I think they're overestimating them in Pennsylvania? Partially, but not too dramatically. But when it comes down to Michigan, it makes sense for the numbers. These polls aren't done on a universal front to the extent that they would be off by the same exact margin as every single state. I think I take it on a state-by-state -state basis, especially knowing the electoral history and the uh, predictability history of the CNN polls or any other polls in general. And right now I would say, sure, they could be technically overestimating Michigan, but that's a six-point advantage in a red wave year. That's not something we should ever be seeing. Even right now, what is the lead for Gretchen Whitmer on the 538, sorry, not the 538, the real clear politics average is something that should not be happening in a red wave year. That's where it's really becoming hard for me to wrap my head around. Hey, there is a Democrat winning in a state that Biden only won by 2.8%. And in most of the pollsters, she's winning by more than Biden in a year where Biden is unpopular by 11 points nationwide. I mean, the math simply doesn't seem to be mathing in many cases, but Gretchen Whitmer is on track to win her election. And that's what we find. It's not only on the expectations of the polls, but it's also in the forecast. Tudor Dixon has slightly improved her chances at victory. At one point in time, she had a 3% chance at victory, but 13% is not where I would want to be if I was a Republican in a swing state. There simply is not enough time between now and November for the Republicans to win Michigan. And that is the problem for Tudor Dixon. This rise in possibility at winning came way, way too late. And while we do have, you know, 15 days to go, that simply is not enough time, at least from my own expectations, to turn around a governor's race that was going so far in one direction to a point where the Republicans end up winning. It could happen, though. I could be shocked. I could be completely bamboozled, right? I could be completely thrown off from what my expectation is. But I do think, and I say this in confidence, that the Democrats win the governor's race in Michigan and Pennsylvania. We barely talked about that 15-point number, but honestly, it's something that I am not too far shying away from. I don't think 15 is going to happen, but I think Shapiro could win by double digits. And I also think, generally speaking, that CNN in itself does have accurate polls to some extent. They do call races about 60% of the time, but that's similar to practically every other pollster across the nation. At most, you see 70%, and that's something that I would say is good for CNN 
but also something that gives me a little bit of reassurance in trusting their data. And it also matches a lot of the averages that we've been seeing, which means they aren't alone in their expectations. So that pretty much wraps it up when it comes down to talking about these brand new CNN swing state polls. They're very interesting. I hope they release more. I hope there's more polling data tomorrow from a number of states. But right now, CNN is telling us that the Democrats are doing well in Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin. But I don't know if I entirely buy the Wisconsin number, but I could see Democrats winning the majority of these races this upcoming November. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe on the left if you haven't already and check out the Instagram and Twitter. At the bottom left of the screen, there's also a Discord server for you to go ahead and join. On the screen, there's a video you can watch and then a playlist for my 2022 election analysis videos. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all later today. Sorry, tomorrow.